and my leg around the top to top expedition in Svalbard. On the passage to Svalbard, it was too much wind for the wind meter. Just it was in our watch when there was so much wind and so many waves, and we s we were looking at the birds. They were flying and having so much fun in this wind. And we s we were seeing that they were on the top of the mast, and suddenly we saw that our wind meter fell down, and so that never happens. So there was a lot of wind, and because we had so much wind, our dinghy went not overboard but halfway overboard. It was still hanging on the back of the boat. And it took ages to get our dinghy back onto the boat and secure it with lots of ropes. But uh, it was pretty crazy. There lots of wind and dinghy hanging out from the other side. And we were supposed to take a sail in, but we, we got all everything under control in the end. <laughs> When the weather calmed down, we did some training, but soon after that, there was another problem. What happened? <laughs> Nothing! No, no, no. So, what happened? So, the toilet is kind of blocked. It's shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> the ship must go out, and the show must go on. It's not funny, okay? <laughs> and so we couldn't really do our business in the boat itself so we had to do our business outside in a bucket um which was freezing cold because like it's, it is really cold up here so but this morning it's now the second day uh it cleared up and it's really nice because we have so so beautiful and so many dolphins <laughs> Okay, so we put the anchor up again, and then when it came up, there was this big ball of seaweed. Just and and uh, I volunteered to climb down, well, onto the anchor, onto the ball of seaweed, hold myself to the boat, take the biggest knife we have, which is about as big as um, my hand, and just start cutting it or basically hitting it so that the seaweed would go away. And after a t after a little bit, it was it was fine. It was gone. But um, it took a while. We were so happy to arrive in the Svalbard. But because of icebergs coming from the glacier and high winds, we were stuck on the boat for another four days. We checked the weather, which didn't look promising. So we, we practiced some emergency drills and try to fix everything. When the weather got better, we sailed further north and took some samples because our goal is to collect data as close to the North Pole as possible. Um, so I'm doing two different types of research here on the boat at the moment. Um, we've got the microplastic sampling, um, which we do with the manta trawl, where we pull a net through the water for half an hour, and then it collects all the tiny bits of plastic that you can't really see with your eyes, but that are floating around in the water. Um, and at the end, we take the net out of the water, and then we can see what was caught in the net and how much plastic is in the water. Um, so that's one part. Um, the microplastics that are going to um, universities and a research centre in Norway, so that's Norse, the Research Institute and um, the Western Norway University of Applied Sciences in Songdal. They're looking at the microplastics component. And then the second part is um, eDNA, environmental DNA. We pump water and it captures all the little um, organic particles that belong to a, an animal. So for example, we lose our hair and fish lose scales. And so if you collect all those different bits, you can see what species were in that water um, the last few days. 
so the eDNA component of our research is going to the ETH Zurich in Switzerland. So that'll be looking at um, the species in the water. Um, and I'm a student there. So um, the cool thing that we're tr doing here is that we're combining microplastic sampling and eDNA sampling. So um, that means that we can see how much plastic is in the water and which species are in those waters. So it's kind of combining the two studies so we know what species are coming into contact with how much plastic and what types of plastic. Um, that obviously doesn't mean a, a complete correlation, but it just means that we can see the overlaps, which is an interesting thing to know. We are sailing north and I'm wondering what kind of animals we will see at 80 degrees north. 